This is question one from paper 33 from the June 2020 Cambridge International Exams. Up the top right of the screen here, you'll find a card that will bring you to my playlist that has all my solutions to the rest of the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so you can try it before looking at my solution. In this question, they ask us to solve this inequality here. Now, if I have time, which I hope I do, I'm going to answer this twice, just to show you different ways it could be done. If you're expecting me to square both sides, um, you're going to have to skip ahead a little in the video, because that's the second way I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to draw a picture. I'm just simply going to draw a picture of what's happening here and answer nearly everything on the picture. And it's a sketch, so you don't need a ruler, you don't need to be too exact. And first, uh, let's draw this one here, 2x minus 1. Um, we'll pick, uh, say, minus 1 here, and uh, minus 1, and 2x will have a slope, uh, a slope of 2x. Let's put it like this. Um, that must mean for every... For every 1 it moves over, it moves down 2. So for every 1 it moves down, it must move over a half. Now, I, I don't think I need this point for this question at all, but still, I might as well put everything in. And then um, the absolute value just tells us instead of going up underneath the, the zero line, so this is positive, so it stays positive, positive 4, positive 3, positive 1, and 0 stays 0 inside an absolute, but minus 1 gets turned into a a plus 1. Minus 2 gets turned into a plus 2. So drawing an absolute value just looks like this. And there, uh, let's rub this one out. We don't even need it there. Just a, just a distraction. And this hits here at 1. Right, let's draw a second one. Uh, 3. We can, we can draw just x plus 2 and then multiply it by 3. It'll just stretch it up. But trust me, that's identical to drawing 3x plus 6. You can try it out, but it will just be identical. Basically, this number multiplied by 3 will just make it bigger. This number multiplied by 3 will just make it bigger. If it was down in the minus world, changing a sign and then multiplying by 3, it's the same thing. So let's, uh, let's draw this one here. Um, so we get 6 as the y-intercept. Let me use a different color for the second one. Uh, 6, let's put it up here. And it has a, it has a slope of 3. So it's even sharper than this one. Let's go down like this and uh, bounce it back up like this. And let's uh, have this one continue on because that is going to be important to us this point. Now, uh, what can I fill in here? A slope of three. For every, for every six, it go, for every one it goes across, it goes up two. So if it goes up six, it must have come across three. So, or sorry, yeah, two. <laughs> for, every, for every three it goes up, for every 3 it goes up, it must go across 1, and for every 6 it goes up, it must go across 2. So this value here must be minus 2. And let's answer the question with just a picture now. This side, the black, the black drawing here, and this side, the red one, when is the black bigger than the red? Let's see, this is, red goes all the way up here, continues up, and it goes up very fast. This will never be bigger than red. Uh, let's see. Here it's bigger than red. Here, and it'll never be bigger than red again. So the answer to this question is just that x is between these two numbers. So all just from the drawing now, the question is revolved down to a simple uh, line, equating two lines. So uh, we just need to equate this line with this one, and this line with this one. Okay, this line is the minus of this one. So uh, let's see, it intercepts at, well, it's literally just minus this, but you can also think of it as it intercepts at one and it has a slope of minus two, minus two x plus one. Um, that's y equals, y equals that. The red line here is exactly what we drew. That's y is equal three x plus six. And then um, what other? We want to intercept this one again here. Y is equal to minus 2x plus 1. And we want to intercept it with the minus of this one. That's y is equal to minus 3x minus 6. And then uh, let's just solve these. And we find out we only need the x's. So let's just get rid of the y's. Uh, let's take bottom away from top. That'll be a 0. 3 minus minus 2 is 5x. And 6 minus 1 is plus uh, 5. This one will tell us, let me write it here. 
This one will tell us x is equal to minus 1. And that's that point there. That makes sense to us. We knew it was between 0 and minus 2 from the drawing. And again, this one here. Let's, uh, let's take the top one minus the bottom. We'll get 0 is equal to x. 1 minus minus 6 is plus 7. And uh, that tells us x is equal to minus 7. Again, the drawing makes somewhat sense for that. My, my drawing wasn't great, but it's certainly in the right sort of area. So simply, the answer to this question is x must be, let's see, bigger, I always mix these up, uh, bigger than minus 7 and less than minus 1. And that's it, just from drawing a picture and answering some very simple simultaneous equations. Now, if you have any questions for that, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm going to rub this out and do the question again. Uh, I'll go fast enough because it's the more common way to do it. We're going to square both sides. I think it's a little longer and there's more maths involved. This takes more understanding, which is why I like it better. Okay, our second way of doing this is squaring both sides. This works because the absolute value guarantees that both sides are a plus number. So if we square a plus number, um, that's bigger than this plus number. Square, let me start that again. This is definitely a plus number. This side is 3 multiplied by a plus number. So it's definitely a positive number. So if we know this side is definitely bigger than this side, squaring it, should also be true. This side will still be bigger than this side. For, ex for example, that's not true. If minus 2 is, is bigger than minus 4. We're squaring both sides. Well, this is not true. Um, this is incorrect. So uh, knowing that it's positive allows us to do this. So let's, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll just square both sides because that will get rid of the absolute value. Because that's the other thing squaring both sides does. Uh, plus or minus 2. If we square it, it'd just be a plus. There will be no plus or minus anymore. All right, so if we square both sides, we'll get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So I'll just square. Yeah, I'll go fast in this because we've already done this question in the first part. Uh, this will be 9 multiplied by x squared plus 4x plus 4. And uh, let's rearrange all that. Um, get all the x's, everything on the left, I guess. Uh, leave zero over here. I'll just change this marker and as magic I have changed it. Okay, we have 9x on this side. Take away 4x, 5x squared, um, 36 minus, oh, plus another 4 is 40x and we have 36 minus 1 is plus 35. Um, and 5 goes into all of them, so let's uh, sort that out now. We'll take 5 out. And we're left with x squared plus 8x plus 7. Let's factorize that more. We'll uh, factorize this into 7 times 1 seems to work. x and 7, x and 1. And if they're both positive. Okay. So we know this is less than 0. 5 is a positive. So um, that's certainly not going to affect it. We just get rid of that. If 5 multiplied by this is less than 0, well then, this is also less than 0. That's why I can get rid of the 5. I'm not rubbing it out um, for any other reason. If, this, if it's all less than 0, multiplying by 5 couldn't have changed that. Now, at this point, uh, we again have two ways we can do this question. And again, one of them is graphically. I'll do the graphical one first because it's nice and quick. If we draw this, it is minus 7 and minus 1. If you watched the first part, you'd know, uh, you'd, you'd have expected that. And we have x squared, a positive uh, quad, quad, um, quadratic. So it looks something like this. And remember what we're saying, when is this less than 0? Well, it's less than 0 when x is between these two numbers, minus 1 and minus 7. So x is uh, bigger than minus 7 and uh, less than minus 1, just like the first part. And the other way to do this is to notice that the only way to get less than 0 is to be a minus number. So that means that this must be a plus and that must be minus, or the other way around. Or that's minus and that is plus. So we just look at those possibilities. X. This, you might need to do this on some questions when it's not easy to draw a picture. Um, X plus 7, let's say it's bigger than 0 and x plus 1 is less than 0, that's a plus, that's a minus, and they make a minus overall. That's what this is saying. Let's see what we'd get out of that. That would tell us that x is 
bigger than minus 7 and x is less than minus 1, which is the answer, but that's not the only possible answer, let's see, or, well, yet, anyway, we do know it's the only answer. Uh, the other thing could have been x plus 7 is less than 0 and, and x plus 1 is greater than 0, what the, will that tell us? x is less than minus 7, and this is and, let me put that and back in, and x is greater than minus 1. Well, that's impossible. You can't be less than minus 7 and greater than minus 1. Uh, you can't be over here and over here. This one's impossible, so we can ignore it, and there's your answer. Or, if you wanted to draw the picture, there was your answer, or the, the first way I did it by drawing a picture, that was your answer. Three ways, well, two ways to get the answer and the second one forked into another two ways to finish it. Right, I hope that answered you. It's a short question that I made long. I apologize for that. Or I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. And until next time, have a great day.